Yo. What's going on, man? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, just running around. It's funny that we're uh, we're doing the same thing almost. Um, a little bit different of a journey because you played more and I uh, was coaching for some years. Uh, but I'm interested to see how you decided to turn your career um, into what it is now and how you got there. But um, we'll get there. Um, yeah, for sure. So I'll just introduce the podcast. Um, this is The Trophy Room, episode seven, with um, the best player ever from Bay City, Michigan. Uh, oh, yeah, without a doubt, without a <laughs> doubt. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was reading some articles, and uh, it's like you have a, and I could be wrong, but just the intuition of there's like a real love uh, hate, admiration, animosity for um, your experiences in Bay City, in your in your uh, some of the things that you went through growing up, um, because of some of the decisions that you made. Which, I mean, kids make decisions. You know what I mean. Yeah. And I'm specifically speaking about. Um, and to jump right in, uh, you decommitting from Michigan State and going to Syracuse uh, after being and when I was looking at it, I'm like you know what, what, I can understand it happening but then I, I didn't know you were from Michigan and yeah you had um, the reputation and uh, you had done what you've done in the city so consistently and kind of put the city on to a certain extent um, in your school uh, to having so many supporters thinking all right yeah you know Dev is going to or Eric is going to uh, e is going to Michigan State, and then you decide. Um, but I want to jump into first before I let you go. I want to read an article that I read um, that probably bring you back down memory lane, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right? Yeah, sweet. Um, and I wanted to do it because a lot of people, and I feel like if if you were the Hooper and young man that you were today, um, back in the day, if we were living in those times, you would be the kid, the player. Um, with 200,000 followers. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, your whole pro and I know that there's a lot of people who don't know exactly what it is you came from. So this article goes, and I'm sure you, you've heard it before. It says, F uh, Eric Devendorf is better than you. Yeah, you. You probably don't know him, but you should while you still can. And this is 2003, I believe. Um, while most kids are enjoying this, their summer, Eric is 6'3", soon to be junior guard, just busting his ass with his, with his assistant coach from Bay City Central, getting better than you. Dribbling drills, passing, shooting, and shooting, and shooting. Um, what you thought being a top-ranked player in Michigan came easy? Damn, that's why he's better than you. I can tell he gets a lot of these calls. Inconsiderate reporters, writers, journalists calling his home, asking to speak with him. I'm one of those pricks. I call his house around lunchtime. A girl's voice comes over the phone. Hello? Hi. Is, is Eric there? Yeah. May I ask who's calling? My name is Matt. I write for, uh, before I can finish, she's calling for Eric. So this is kind of like, I'm going through this. This is what we do. Um, <laughs> she knows the deal. Uh, he comes on the phone, not annoyed, maybe pleased even. The first thing I bring up is college. Duke's future has to consist of basketball. He's got the likes of Duke, Arizona State, Syracuse, Michigan State, and Michigan. Um, he tells me Texas A&M also. The list uh, keeps rolling, and this kid still has two years of high school left. I decided to take my chance and ask him the question kids his age hate to hear, but always do. I know you get this a lot, but where do you see yourself going to college? Um, do you stay close to home? Uh, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know if there's a front runner really, uh, Eric says humbly. My mom wants me to stay close to home, Michigan, Michigan State, but I'm really looking for the best offer. The best offer? When you have schools after you that are in the top 10 in the nation, what's the best offer? Uh, I decided to take my chances again. I challenged him, tried to piss him off. I doubt him. You think you'll be able to hold your own? I mean, this is D1 college basketball. You think you can handle it? He almost eager, he, he's almost eager to answer. I know I can. I worked hard and been able to play against top competition. I'm working out with my assistant coach, and I think I'm ready for all that. We talk about his school, Bay City Central, and what it's like coming from a school best known in hoops, uh, best known in hoops for being the fodder of the Flints or for the Flints and the Saginaws of its league. 
Bay City Central isn't a basketball school. It's motivation for me to try and make it one, Dimidor says. Uh, he tells me about how he's been working hard uh, with his coaches and teammates. He tells me about he's shooting 500 shots a day and dribbling drills. I asked Eric to describe his game in three words. Um, he uses and only needs one. I'm flashy, says the young man. <laughs> <laughs> says the young buck. I like to get to the hole. I like to slash, he said, em emphasizing the word slash and hole. He sounds excited just talking about it. I do a crossover dribble a lot, and I learned that from Iverson, Eric says, when asked whose game uh, his resembles. But I'm flashy, and I like to try things, and I learned that from Pistol Pete Maravich. I asked him if he mixed retro with new school, Iverson with Pistol. Oh, yeah, I like to mix it up, the best of the best. The best part of my game is definitely my quickness and ability to get to the hoop. I also like the three. Eric's factual, but modest. It might have been a stretch to get him to talk about his game, much less talk about high, his high points. Speaking of best, I bring up competition. Who's the best he's played against uh, in the Saginaw Valley? Uh, Saginaw Valley's tough, man, Eric said. The best player I've played against probably uh, is Anthony Roberson and some, play and some players from the ABCD camp. Although his future is undecided, Eric Dievendorf is the type of players, is the type of players coaches like. He's good. Shit, he knows he's good. But why tell you about it? You'll see him soon enough, uh, and then you'll know. Damn, he's better than me. What uh? So I and I, I wanted to do my research and try really because when wow. I told people I was gonna, you definitely did. When, when, I, <laughs> when I told people I was gonna interview, you know, people were like, that's a good interview, you know. That's and I felt that when I asked and I reached out because, um, you know, obviously we remember Syracuse, and uh, when I did my research, I knew Oak Hill also, but all, but but more so. Again, you were a, a, a hooper, like for real, back home. Um, and I don't know if a lot of people know that. So what, what uh, memories did that article bring up? How does that make you feel? What emotions does it make you feel? Oh, that was awesome, man. Who, I, who, who wrote that article? Was that a Bay City Times article or what was um, that? This is Michigan Preps. Michigan Preps. Oh, the man. Staff writer was, his name was Matt Cromwell. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that does that does take me back, man. I, I remember like going on Michigan preps and just th that was kind of like the ranking site for when we were growing up. But yeah, man, Bay City wasn't really known as a basketball town at all. But like me growing up since I was seven, eight, when my dad introduced me to the game. Um, I always I always had a basketball in my hand, like if it was raining, if it was snowing, whatever it was, I was outside shoveling the snow, chipping the ice you know, uh, before school, in the morning, after school, after practice, like, I, that's what I did, you know what I mean, and um, like I said, Bay City really didn't have that, so it was kind of like, people were like, sometimes like joking, and joking on me, or, or looking at me funny, because I always had, you know, at lunchtime, I had my basketball, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I was going to hoop, and, um, but the time, by the time I got to high school, well, really middle school, but, but really high school, um, you know, I, I uh, was on varsity as a ninth grader, well, actually, I played JV my first four games, and I averaged like 46 my first four games on JV. So they moved me up uh, to ninth varsity. Grade? In ninth grade, I was on JV. So, like, we had freshman JV varsity. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in my ninth grade year, my first four games, I averaged 46 on JV. So they moved me right up to to uh, to varsity. And first game on varsity, hit the game, winning shot. So uh, that's kind of how it all started right there. And people were like, okay, well, uh, we understand why you had that ball uh, carrying with him all around school. He was, he was serious about it. But, um, and, and, um, after really my freshman year, um, I started playing in the summer, uh, with, with AAU team out of Detroit called Michigan Hurricanes. And that's really when uh, everything kind of really took off when, when I was able to get on the, uh, uh, the summer basketball scene, uh, with ABCD camp and, uh, all those AAU tournaments, uh, playing against, you know, the best players in the country. That's really when it took off. And, and it was like, man, this dude from Bay City, 35,000 people, he one yeah. of the best basketball players in the country. You know what I mean? And um, so I, I remember at some of our games, like we, you know, I remember going to the games when I was young, it maybe be 50, 75 people. You know what I mean? And I remember going to one of my games, we played Saginaw Arthur Hill at the time. Um, and they were number one team in the state. Saginaw Valley League, good league, man. Like it was, it was Saginaw Valley League, and then it was uh, PSL, which is Detroit Public School League. Those were the two two best conferences in in Michigan. Um, but I remember playing Saginaw Arthur Hill, and it was it was probably the gym hold like maybe twenty five hundred people. It was like three thousand people in there, but there was a line outside, people trying to climb in the window. Were you still a freshman then? 
this was this probably was my I think this was my junior year. But like what I'm really trying to get at is like this this basketball thing was never happening in Bay City. And then for so for something like that to be like, man, there's people trying to climb in the windows and see this kid play. You know what I mean? It was that's when really it was like uh our like, man, this 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 kid's for real and uh, we started to take basketball a little bit more serious. And, and what, uh, what did that acknowledgement and that um, just people paying attention to you, did it do anything to you mentally in a positive or a negative fashion? But I, you know what? I I don't know. Back then, I really wasn't thinking about it like that, you know, because we didn't have all the social media and, and, and like we do now and, and everything. So uh, if anything, it was just like the newspaper and, and things like that, which is cool. My mom used to keep all the clippings. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we got we got a whole it's bunch of stuff. Ball. at Oh, man. She, you know, mom's got a whole book. I think my sister made me uh, a book uh, one year of all, all my old uh, high school clippings. So uh but yeah man it was uh it was different for bay city at the time you know what i mean to have to have a basketball we're really known as like a football school yeah. um you know a big time football school but what's the demographic i didn't look at that but what's what's the demographic of the city so it's a little city it's it's uh it's mostly white i mean you got black Me mexican asian um so i mean it's it's diverse and then um you know saginaw and, and flint which is i spent a lot of time in saginaw growing up Flame. because that's, Flame. that's that's where the hoop was at that's where the hoop was at but it was only five, 10 minutes down the road you know what i mean i could just get get right then we and we used to hoop all the time like tory jackson and, and dar tucker and uh mentioned anthony roberson and uh those were all the guys from saginaw who i used to go play with in, in open gym and um then i used to go to flint so i was like i was traveling and hooping you know what yeah. I mean? it was how, it, how early how early were you in those environments where you knew that you could hoop. Your father knew that you were talented, and he was going to try to continue to put you in situations where you had to um, learn how to play in those environments. So early, my dad was from Saginaw. So, uh, you know, he he had fam. My grandma lived in Saginaw, and I used to go there. And we used to have a Salvation Army right across the street, and he used to go over there and play. I just used to go shoot and, and do it. So from a young age, I, I remember, uh, you know, going there and, and, and playing, you know, better competition when I was – fifth sixth grade you know what I mean it was uh it, it was like an everyday thing for me traveling back and forth to either Saginaw or Flint or, or whatever it was but mm -hmm. that's really where I, I got that that edge you know what I mean like Bay City mm -hmm. really they they had some ball players but nobody really played it was just kind of like they played for fun you know what I mean but when I went to Saginaw and Flint like these dudes was you know f for real like they was playing for serious AAU high school trying to go hoop at college so yeah. Um, and they and they and they saw and they saw the white boy walking in the gym like yo, we about hey look, let's go at hey, him. Let's go hey, look. Him. But at first, that at first glance, that's what you might have thought. Yeah. But but well, then yeah, when, that's what it that's what it always is at first glance. Yeah, for sure. But but they knew and they heard and and uh, they found out quick. Trust me, because no, uh, no. every every gym I walked in, it was uh, I, I was in there going to kill. You know what I mean? And, and usually, growing up, that's what that's what happens. So. Uh, man, I had some some fun times, man. Just uh, just playing rec uh, at, at BV Buena Vista Center. Uh, uh, I remember at like Ricker and, and uh, just community centers and say like we was really battling. And then I'd play those dudes and during the season, you know what I mean. And, and I and I knew all of them. Let me ask you something. And, and you guys played in the park a lot. Yeah, yeah, we, yep, yep. I, more so, but more so growing up, we had gyms all the time too. Like be this, it was rocking. You know what I mean? Like nowadays. I think even the kids now, they, it's not like that. You know what I mean? They, we were just playing, you know, all day. You go to the Y, we go there at 10 in the morning, and we leave at like 7, 8 at night. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we was we was really mm -hmm. getting it. And then, and then we used to have something in the summer called Midnight Hoops at the Y, and this was in Bay City. Yeah, we um, had, it, I'm, from, I'm from upstate New York. I'm from Albany, New York, and we used to have yeah. that. We used to have Teen Night 2 where we used to hoop out all night. Who, like, like for, so it was from like 10 to 12, but – that nobody was doing that, so people from like Saginaw and Flint, they they were all coming down there. I remember those runs. It'd be if you lost, you know the runs where you lose, you're you not get getting back, back on. on. Exactly. So it, it it was from a young age like that, that competitive edge and that um like that swagger, I guess you sort of speak. You know, that it, it was already forming. You know what I mean? And then and then like I was really I was doing my thing. So now that the confidence was at a whole nother level. You know what I mean? Like when it, when it's a, when you're the only white dude and, and you're going all around in the gyms and it's 
it's against all black dudes and you really doing your thing. Yeah, yeah that's going to give you a whole nother level of confidence. You know what I'm saying? And then now when you're going into the uh, to the regular season in high school, it's like, man, I've been here, d done that. You know what I mean? So it, it was really like I was in, I was in kill mode throughout throughout that whole that whole high school scene. And what what was your approach to academics as a as a teenager? So probably not as uh, focused as I should have been. I mean, I was a smart kid, so I I made sure I got my grades right. But like I was so like this on ball, and I knew I was going to get a scholarship. Like I I made sure I I, I did enough to. Uh, to make sure I've been eligible to go, you know, go play in college. But, mm -hmm. you know, looking back now and you, you really want to be able to set yourself up, um, you know, for doing stuff after basketball, you know what I mean? Like, and, and, and I learned that later, later in life, but um, I think I'm fortunate enough to, to share that with these kids coming up now, like really like when you're, when you're, uh, you know, doing in these basketball camps or, or whatever it is, you really meet people and network for, you know, what you get, what you got going on after. And uh, I think that's, that's huge, man, because uh, when you're, when you're playing ball at a high level, it's going to be a lot of people that you're going to meet that, that, that might not, that might not, you know, uh, have anything to do with basketball, but you know, they got something really to do with have. something else. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just, you know, keep your mind open. You know what I mean? Obviously focus on what you're doing, but um, don't, don't be in a box. Don't put yourself in a box. Like this is all I'm doing. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Yeah, and I, and I asked that question because um, I, I believe, and I'm going to skip, we'll come back, but I believe after your freshman year, during your freshman year at Syracuse, um, you were on the draft boards um, as a potential draft pick. So I know with your with your pedigree and your experiences and now you're at Syracuse, you're on the draft board, you're still only thinking league. I'm going to league. I'm going to league. And I, my question, lead, or my statement that I wanted to lead into a question is when did you start – thinking about something else other than basketball it, it, Re really man like probably just just like three years ago for real mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like it was really like it, this is, my mind was like on but in, in like as I got out of college yeah I started um you know getting feelings for like getting a feel for doing different things like but really like these last three years is like really when it took off like just meeting people that um, you know, and, and the platform that Syracuse gave me, the people I was able to meet, um, it, it is incredible. You know what I'm saying? And that and that really got me interested in, in other things like, um, you know, just like like even like just simple something simple, like being able to take care of your money and knowing where to put it. You know, what I mean, we, we weren't really taught that growing up. You know what I'm saying? Like the money that we got, it was gone. It was spent. You know what I'm saying? And And, for, and I was really taught that later too, like after college, you know what I mean? And, and I think a big thing now, man, just being able to, even at a high school level, you know what I mean? You want to be able to uh, let these kids know, you know, how to, how to handle the things, real life situations, you know what I mean? Cause now when basketball is took away from you, it's like, damn, what do I do? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you, you want to use basketball as a tool, but don't, let, don't have it be your crutch. You, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you don't want to just rely on that, and when it's gone, have nothing. You know what I'm saying? You want to use basketball as a tool and all these people that you meet, you know, all these places that you can go. Um, because you don't got to – even if you don't make it to the NBA, you get to go overseas and get paid and, and travel the world and experience different cultures and meet different people in, in different parts of the world, which can go a long way, you know, d depending on how you develop those relationships. You know what I mean? So I think it, it, it was big um, – you know, it is big for kids at a young age to really kind of realize that. And it can be tough. Like, they can be like, man, I'm just hooping. You know what I mean? But um, I think yeah, even just... The kids that experience on their own, and some of them, you know, some yeah. take lead, but some are so dialed in and have a one-track mind on who um, that they hold on to it for too long. Or not that they hold on for too long for too long, but they also just don't position themselves for anything other than basketball. What do you, what, so say you walk into a room of um, the top 100 kids and you introduce yourself and they know who you are now. What do you say to them about finding a balance between I'm dialed in and all my eggs are in a basket on a hoop because that's what I need to be to reach whatever my ceiling is and having 
um, to the balance of trying to have some type of thought about academics, career, um, anything other than the sport. Well, I mean, big, big thing for me too, that, um, you know, I wish I would have learned earlier was like time management and, and having a routine, you know what I mean? Like if you really have a routine, especially young, if you in college, like, okay, I got to do this, I got to do this. And then just stick to that routine and really be consistent. And then now everything just becomes habits. You know what I mean? And, and if I was going in there and tell those guys, I'd just have an open mindset. Don't, don't be one track minded. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's, it's way bigger. And then like this basketball, like I was just saying, it's a tool. Like you love it for sure. You love the game, but, and you don't have to, like, you don't have to get out of the game if you're not playing. Like you said, you coaching, we're training kids, you doing that, you giving back. Like there's so many things you could do with the game. Use it as a tool and, and don't let it use you. You, you know what I mean? Like it's, and, and I know it, it'll be hard for a lot of those kids to process, but like you were saying, you just want some to take heed. You know what I mean? And now like it, what I really learned was when you giving back, when you just doing, being a genuine person, give, whether it's giving back through the game, you know, just giving back in the community, whatever it is, things open up for you. Like without you even knowing, just opportunities come up, come out the air. Like, so, so I, I would also tell them like, Make sure you you a good person. Like, mm -hmm. carry carry yourself. You know how your mother would want to see you treat. You know what I mean? Like that's you want to do that. And like I, and I, I I know like growing up, you know, or going through college, like I wasn't the best dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't. But and we all have to learn that. But I think the earlier you really start to realize that, the better you will become. You know, because now now and and everybody it's gonna be everybody's journey is different. So it's like timing is gonna be different for everyone. Um, but I think now, like me and you, like when we can get those kids and, and be able to get their ear and talk to them, like that's what you want to spit to them. You want to kind of let them know that. So, and, and be real with them and be serious with them. And so they really know what time and that, it is. And, and, that's, and that's the key, right? The key is no matter who you're talking to, you've been through it, you understand it, you have the experience, you have the knowledge, and you have almost a blueprint of what it looks like, right? So, regardless of how you feel like they're going to react and obviously we have to talk to different kids different ways but it's got to be real at the end of the day and then they'll respect them more the same way that when people were real with us when we were kids maybe we might not have thought about it in the moment when you look back it's like i'm i sure am glad that he said those things to me and he held me accountable no question and that's the biggest thing man you you want to be able to be held accountable you know what I mean? There's so many kids that they're like nowadays, like you're, you're, you're real good at basketball. So they're not holding you accountable for anything that you do, w whether it's like what you post on social media or who, who you hanging around. Like if you, if you in that situation and you really, you know, a high level player, a high caliber player, you need people to hold you accountable. Like, Hey man, like, no, nah, that's not what we doing. Like we're not posting that or, or we're not saying that, or, or we're not reacting to that. You know what I mean? And, and, and you see the kids that go far, they have those people in their corner, you know what I mean? And, and, and a lot of kids, um, you know, who just got yes men around them, you know, they kind of flame out. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? Because mm -hmm. the NBA doesn't want that. They don't, they don't want that. It's, it's a business. It, it, they paying you millions of dollars. You know what I mean? So how you represent their organization is their number one priority. It, unless you LeBron James. And, and what is LeBron James? He probably one of the most, he carries himself better than any athlete I ever we ever saw. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, now he's he, he's he like played, this. he wasn't a good he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't a good example to use. So. Right, right, but that, but you know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. that's he. Well, you can look at LeBron and be like, damn, I should be like how he doing it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, accountability, huge, huge for these kids. You got to be able to have somebody who could hold you accountable. One thousand percent. Um. Talk to me about the Michigan – talk to me about your recruiting process. Um, I'm sure it was an interesting one. When did you get your first O? How important was it to you? And then how and how was your process, what you learned from it? And then get to, like, yes, I chose State. I, back, I went to Syracuse and so on. Yeah, so, um, you know, back then, uh, you know, usually the top players in Michigan, they, they stayed in State. You know, it was either Michigan or Michigan State. And I remember always going up to Michigan – playing in the open gym, 
always going up to Michigan State. I, I was real like close with those guys. So like uh, Shannon Brown, Kelvin Torbert. Early age. How how early was it when early, you started going up there? High school. I was probably sophomore sophomore freshman sophomore year. Like really the after the summer of my freshman year, going into my sophomore. That's really when I was up there like every weekend, like just just working out. Uh, playing open gym with the guy and then hanging out with the guys. You know what I'm saying? So really, like, Michigan State, it was like that's where I was going to go. I committed my my sophomore year. Uh, before that, I had – I mean, I had a lot of schools, more like uh, even like UCLA, Georgetown, Louisville, North Carolina, North Carolina State. Um, Florida was another one. I was, I was really going to go to Florida. Um, did, but, that, did, that, did those opportunities come at, in, when you were playing at Oak Hill or that, those were even prior to getting there? No, nah, that was before. So after, like, after I went on the summer scene, yeah. um, like, went to the ABC camp in, in autumn term, like, that's when I really started. It was like, okay, like, I was getting all the high high level offers, you know what I mean? And then after the second, because I went to ABC D camp two years, and, and I made the All Star game twice. First year, you were you were killing. Yeah, I, I had a, I had in high school I was definitely doing my thing, but so the first year I was from Michigan, so I couldn't play in it. But then the second year at the ABC camp, I could play in it because I was going to Oak Hill. You know, Michigan doesn't let you play in uh, summertime All Star games for whatever reason it is. I I don't know what the reason is, Hill? but I think I don't know if it's a rule still, man. But um, but yeah, at that time that that was the rule. So, but I remember uh, when I did get to play, and, and me and Jeremy Pargo just going at it. You know, what I mean, it was it was like that that whole ABCD scene that was like set it off for me. You know what I mean? Like, all, everybody was around, uh, all the coaches. So, right yeah, man. Yeah, that was really when the, the offer started coming. And uh, But back to Florida, I was really going to go there, but their assistant coach had got – I think he left, who was recruiting me. And then – Who was um, it? What was his name? Tommy Ostrom. Where'd he go? Uh, I think – you know what? He might have got demoted or something like that. But he, I think he's at South Alabama with, with Coach Pelfrey, if I'm, not mis- if I'm not mistaken right now. Uh, but I was so I committed to Michigan State at my um, at the ABCD camp um, sophomore. But so 2003, this is what happens to how I decommitted to Michigan State. Uh, 2003, I went to the game at the Breslin Center. They happened to be playing Syracuse. This is you know this is a 2003 national championship year for for Cuse. So mm-hmm. when I saw G Mac and Mello and Hack and Billy Eden and JP and and those guys how they played and in the pace that they play with. You know, with like pick and roll and structure, like really kind of half court. Syracuse was like, I'm a transition dude. Like I like to get up and yeah. down and really and really play with pace. So I remember yeah. telling my AU coach, uh, "Man, we gonna have to. We might have to see what's going on with with Syracuse, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we might have to check because you know no one going uh, at that time recruit me because I was committed. So I remember." Uh, that that week I had called I called Coach Izzo and I had to tell him, you know, I was gonna open up my options. I'm gonna decommit. And I remember he was upset. He was like, "Man, I don't know if that's the best decision you're gonna make. That's probably not." And I'm like, "Well, you know, I'm pre- I'm 16, so I got you know I got a lot more bad decisions to make." <laughs> but um, but I remember so I did that, and then my coach reached out to Syracuse. Uh, at the time, Troy Weaver was the assistant, and then obviously Coach Bayheim, the head coach. They flew, they flew down to Detroit because that's where we had practice for AAU uh, at Detroit Denby High School. So we had, I remember this practice. We had Texas, Arizona, UConn, Syracuse, Pittsburgh, all those schools at it because we had we had a good team. Me, Wilson Chandler, uh, Tory Jackson, Andre Ricks. I mean, we had we had a good squad. So it was all D1. Jabari Curry went to DePaul. Um, so I remember they watched the practice after the practice, uh, they come up to me and, and they're like, well, you want to go, you want to come? <laughs> and I was, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I do. And they're like, well, you, you got the scholarship right here on the table. So, and that, that was even since, before you got on campus. Yeah. They, that was the first time they saw me. That was the first time they saw me play. Well, I, mean, I don't know. They see me play, but the first time they saw me, it came in person because I was already committed to Michigan State. But, yeah. The, so before, the, they, before they came down and seen you play, the coach who you had contact, that, you, uh, that your coach had contact, did you guys have, like, some in-depth conversations? Like, did you guys talk 
a number of times before they came down or not even not really nah not really like because like i just seen the style of play and and um and i didn't really talk to them they talked to them they came down and and that was that i remember going on a visit um and, and really what sealed the deal because coach weaver he uh he left and went to the nba mm -hmm. before i even got there but the the coach who replaced him was rob murphy who was from detroit and and uh, I already knew him from the AAU team. That's he was a part of our AAU program, the Michigan Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. um, so that just made so was me he right at there. Before he got that job, um, Kent State, I believe. I, I think he was at. I think he was at Kent State. But when I was young, he was a part of the of a program. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, mm -hmm. so I I was familiar with him. So that kind of already, uh, I was good. You know, Weave leaving, but Murph taking his place. So, so I was good. Uh, going were you in concerned? There. Were you concerned? Were you thinking about who they were bringing in as freshmen, and then what nah, they had? I, you I just didn't. wanted to go to Q's. See, see, like I didn't worry about anybody, who, like who who was coming in, who I was playing against. Like it, I knew what I was bringing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's just the, that's the mindset. Like I don't if if I do what I'm supposed to do, they, I'm not worried about them. They can't guard me. You, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, like, but that but that that's also a young man's thought process. It's confident. But there's a lot of kids who have uh, presented themselves like that and put themselves in the wrong situation, regardless of how talented they were. Yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, you could go in there and be overconfident and then not go in there and do nothing. But I, know I was the type of dude, I was going in there confident and, and, and doing something, letting you know. Like, it was – I made sure I was – putting in the work i'm not just gonna be confident going in there not putting in the work you know i i, I was putting in the work so it was levels to where i it, it got built up to that mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it was it was hard work that that made me feel that way and uh you know some people might take it like oh this dude this dude an asshole or, or whatever it is but you wasn't you weren't with me when i before school when i was chipping the ice and and and, and shoveling the snow and with my fingers was, was I couldn't feel my fingers. You know what I'm saying? When my, I had cracks in all my fingers because I was shooting the blood out of it every every day. Like you know what I'm saying? So like, for you to tell me, you know how how I can act on the court, I wouldn't think about that. You know what I'm saying? I, I was thinking about all the hard work and all the sacrifice I put to even get here to be in this position. How many how many how many kids play Division One athlete or athletics? The percentage in it is like one point two or something, or like maybe lower than a percentage. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and not saying you got to brag about it, but you you could be confident about that if, if if you make you know if you get to that level. And anybody, and if and then I think anyone who does get to that level feels some type of way or that type of way, some type of confidence, and uh, some no show it more. Some show it more. Relentless. Yeah, yeah. And and I was a player like I was passionate. I was I was a passionate dude. I was an emotional dude, and I wore it on my sleeve. You know what I mean? And sometimes it got me in trouble. And we, we, I was talking to Coach Coach Bayham about this um, when I had him on my podcast, and he and he was like, you know, I I love I love players like that. That's because I it means you care. It means you love love the game. You love what you're doing. If if you don't have any emotion, then how can I tell that you really love what you're doing? You, you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying. And and we we talked about Grant Hill how he did, he showed emotion. Trust me, you got you got you got to look all that up. Great players, they show emotion. It's just different. It, it differs from, from, from player to player, but um, I wouldn't have changed anything how I approached it. You, you know what I mean? Like what I would have maybe learned from my mistakes as far as, you know, how I control my emotions and things like that. Yeah. I, yeah, I wish I would have maybe learned a little bit earlier, but my approach definitely wouldn't have changed. I, I would have, it, it made me who I am as a player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think a majority of coaches definitely including myself, I, I would prefer to have um, a player with that characteristic of competitive fire um, that has that M effort in them. But let me try to help you learn how to gauge that. No um, question. Rather than when we have guys who we work out who have so much potential but have no motor um, or they just don't know how to compete or – they don't step up to aggression um, on a consistent basis um, yeah. or whatever they lack where, you know, some kids will run through a wall for you. So let me get the kid who's going to run through a wall, but then let's really try to focus on um, sharpening this behavior so that it doesn't shoot us in the foot more than it helps us. 
because that's something you can't teach, right? You can't, you can't, you, you can't teach effort and, and energy. You you just have to bring it, or you can't teach that mindset. You, I mean, you could, you could break it down and tell them, but either you have it or you don't. You know what I'm saying? I've seen talented kids who who don't have that, and they just fade away. They can get by for a little bit, but you would, but. When you see that dude who going at your neck every single play and, and who's relentless, like those are the type of dudes I want because, like you said, we could we could work with how to control, you know, the rage or whatever it is at, at, at times. But I need it. I need a dude who I know every every game is gonna mean something to him. He gonna bring it every. He gonna have that fire in his belly. Those are the type of dudes I want to coach. You could uh, a dude who always gonna two things that you can control all the time is your energy and effort. You know what I'm saying? Like those, I, I don't, I don't. And when you get to the college level, coaches don't got time to teach that. They don't got time. They don't got time. These dudes, these dudes is getting paid a lot of money to take care of their family. They don't got time to tell you to play hard or play or, or be consistent with your effort. You're going to no, get sit down. They, they have, they have time. To, well, how about this? They have time. The assistant coaches definitely have time, but nobody's going to put you in the game until you do it. I, I'll tell you this from from my experience. They might have time, but they not messing with you with that. I'm just gonna keep it a hundred. Like I, I, they not they not gonna. They'll tell you once. Yeah, that's it. They yeah. not they not messing. They not messing. It, it's too much other. It's, and it's too many other guys who is who who are hungry. And it's another guy waiting for you, waiting to play, waiting for you to slip up. That's how it go. That's the game. Mm -hmm. Like you, mm -hmm. you, what you think? If I'm I'm your buddy for sure, but you think I'm. I feel bad for you if you slip up and I get to play. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you you gotta you gotta bring those things, effort and energy. Like that'll get you like further. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're not talented, like you can make up for a lot of things by just playing super hard, man. Like that's those are and and when I went from like playing to coaching, like the more I was in the coaching, I was like I really understood that more. Like. Damn, like you don't want to coach a talented dude who just being like every day at practice. You don't want that, like because you, 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 you don't want to coach effort. Nah, you don't because it takes so much energy out of you to do it to it to like do like I, we got to get these plays right. We got to get this scout right. Like I gotta tell you to play hard. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something like I, I shouldn't need to do. You know what I'm saying? So what it does, and a lot of guys, it, you know, it's tough. What it does is it doesn't allow for continuous growth every time you walk on the court. Because now instead of growing and getting those plays in and being in the right spots defensively and knowing where guys are cutting and whatever the case may be that you're trying to build on, you're begging somebody to run back in transition. No question. We, like I said, we don't got time for that, man. We don't got time to teach effort and energy. You're supposed to learn that before high school if you, if you got a good coach. Like, they're going to teach you that. This is like you're not going to make every shot. You're going to turn the ball over. You're going to make mistakes. But you could run back on defense and make sure you get back in front of my man. You know what I'm saying? Or or you could, you know, make sure, you know, shoot that shot, run back on defense. Or you could – whatever it is, man, like your effort can make up for one of your mistakes you know, rather than just turn it over and then putting your head down and jogging back. I've seen it at the college level. Like I've seen that. Okay. Like where dudes do that and they hug <laughs> like this, like – and then a dude come down and score. I man, you can't feel sorry about yourself for yourself. You know, not at that level. Like it's, mm -hmm. they not feeling sorry for you. These coaches not feeling sorry for you, man. Like, like just be real. Like I'm gonna be a like a hundred percent. Like these dudes is getting paid a lot of money, man. Like don't get me wrong. Like they care. People, they coaches care about you, but at the end of the day, it's either his job or 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 you. He won't keep that job so he because his family can eat. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that too. So you you got to make sure you bring it for yourself, not just for the team, for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause now you building those habits, like going after, like if you if you starting off with like being lazy and and uh, not giving effort in college, like what you gonna do when you get out of college? You know what I'm saying? Like it, those are hard habits to break. You feel what I'm saying? Like like if I'm doing this for 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 these many years, like and I get out of college, how am I gonna change when I get a job? Like. Or when I go overseas, and if I'm talented to, enough to where I, I may get a job overseas, even though I was lacking effort and energy during college, mm -hmm. you gonna get cut right away overseas. Mm -hmm. You gonna get cut, man? What? You playing for? You playing for money? It's a business, and these dudes not trying to two a days. They trying to see you every day. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's cut though, man. Homies, so I got friends that we've heard we've heard the stories of just running. Let's just run. Man, let's well, let's I, 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 I had a, I had a practice in Turkey, man. One time, man, we ain't touch a ball the whole time, man. I'm like, <laughs> like I never, you know what I'm saying? Like we never touch a ball, man. And you know, it, it doesn't matter if they know what they're doing or not. They signing that paycheck for you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's crazy. Hey, talk to me about and I and I kind and I thought about this question that I wanted to ask you earlier and I it slipped my mind but when you just said something it came back is um, talk to the young kids talk to players and it doesn't have to just be basketball but just talk to people in general um, about the importance of have you have to be able to make people better um, so basketball wise yes but also. If you want to get hired as a coach, if you want to get hired as a doctor, if you want to get hired as a lawyer, if you want any career position, you have to find a way to make others better. So I guess you can start with hoop because that's very important. A lot of players are just they know how to score the ball. They might have to do it. They know how to do a lot of me things. But how can I make my teammates better? How important is that? I mean, I mean, when you when you see a player who does that type of stuff, you can just tell. Like you, it, he 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 might have like six points seven rebounds, six assists, it's like nothing that like just comes out you at the stat sheet, but you could just tell like when he make others better. He talking, he making that extra pass. Like he 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 not he not jogging back on D. Like he so everybody feeds off that, right? And that's what makes like great team. When you got people who want to play with each other and you and usually like those are the people who are unselfish. Like those are great teams. Like you watch teams like Gonzaga, like these dudes share the ball, man. Like they they not worried and when you're not worried about who scores who gets the assists? You're not worried about that stuff. That's when you have great teams. That's you know what I'm saying? And, and 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 besides, like other than basketball, like the big thing that I learned is like what really makes you successful is how you help people and how you give back. Because because like that's the, that's really like really what life is about for real for real. Like how how can I help this person out who might not be in a good a, a situation as good as me? But how can I help them? to kind of spark their motivation to, you know, get them out of that rut or how can I uh, do something for my community? So somebody might see me and be like, damn, I want to do that too. Like, like that chain effect, you know what I'm saying? Like all, and when you do stuff like that, like, you don't, you don't want to expect anything to come back around, but it just does like, because you being a good person. We talked about that earlier. You just, just being a good person, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and on a basketball court too, be like, be a good teammate. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody, how many, I play with people, you don't want to play with them because they they don't get the ball, they hang in their head or they like like doing that. Like if they don't, like nobody like that. You know, nobody, nobody wants it. Like it, it's basketball. Like you're going to miss a pass. You might not see a dude. Like, you know, that's just how it go. You know what I'm saying? But nobody want to play with a dude who's sucking his teeth and doing all that or, or talking about talking about each other on the court. Like he not, nobody want to be that. Be like, and it's the same thing in life. Nobody want to be around somebody who sucking your energy out, or, or who don't want to help other people all the time, or just to themselves, or being selfish. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, big thing what basketball taught me is, you know, teamwork early on. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I think now that I've, uh, you know, grown and matured and done all that, um, I've able to figure it out really. Like, damn, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to help up my community out. Like, I got this platform I can use. Let me go ahead and get some coats for these kids or some shoes or some book bags or some free haircuts. Like, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, like, and, and a lot of people, like, even if you don't have the platform, like, you might just go ahead and, like, donate something or, or like, help out to somewhere. Like, like people like me and you, we're fortunate enough to have, like, a platform to where, like, we already have support from, from our basketball family to mm -hmm. where, like, if we really want to do something to help out, we can you know what I'm saying? And when, and when I started to do that stuff, it was like, damn, it, it made me feel better too. Like, damn, I, like this is the type of difference I want to make. Like basketball, you make a difference because, you know, and especially in Syracuse, like people, the fans are, it's like, it's a whole nother level. Right. So like when you, when you out there performing on the court, like you got a special, you hold a special place in their heart, you know what I'm saying? So you making them feel good as far as that goes. But when you go off the court and do something, man, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother level, man. And, and, um, like the more good you do, the more, the more, uh, you know, things you want to help out on, man. It's just, 
it's crazy how life works, man, for real. Like, you never think that your mindset get, you know, get to where I mean, you're thinking like this from when I was a kid. I wasn't thinking like that. It takes experience, yeah. though. Nobody knows without yeah. experiencing it. No question. That's that's the biggest thing. Like, life life can humble you. Life can uh, put you in places where you, you, you know, <laughs> you get down a lot but uh man when you're able to help out somebody who 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 might not be able to help themselves like like that's the real success you know what i'm saying like that's really what what it's all about and basketball has given us uh that kind of avenue to do that you know what i'm saying to do that to help others being fruitful yes no no doubt man that's what it is um Let's go through Syracuse. Just go through your career quick. Like, tell me what what was your hot like your high at Syracuse? What was the what's your best memory like on court where it was just unbelievable? You played well, the team played well. Um, you guys performed in a certain game where your back was against the wall and you came back from twenty or whatever the case. What's that? What's that game for you? That memory? Uh, so uh, it's, it's two that really stick out. And, uh, the first one was my freshman year and it was our, our Big East tournament run. We won four games in four days. Uh, what were you guys, what was your overall going into the game? So we, we, uh, I don't, we, so we didn't have like a great year that first year. Though. Somebody G-Mac's, got hurt, right? Uh, G-Mac was hurt throughout the year, like, uh, uh for, through most of the year. So he was kind of in and out. Uh, but like that, those four games, he just went crazy. You know what I'm saying? He he went crazy. He was hitting hitting crazy shots, like game winners. He hit the game winner against Cincinnati the first game. Hit a big shot to put us in the OT against uh, uh, against UConn. Then we played Georgetown and, and Pittsburgh. So like that whole run, right there. Like like you got to understand these teams that I just said, like Cincinnati, James White, Devin Downey, um, Jaha Muhammad, uh, um, Eric Hicks. Like uh, uh, and then. Uh, UConn, number one team in the nation, Josh Boone, uh, Marcus Williams, Rudy Gay, Rashad Anderson, Denna Brown, Hilton Armstrong, and then Georgetown, Roy Hibbert, Jeff Green, um, who else? Ashanti Cook, Brandon Bowman. Like, they, like these teams in Pittsburgh, Kyle Krause, like, these teams we played against was, like, all top teams in the country. Like, that Big East was, like, whew. like, my freshman year was the first year that they put it into 16 teams, where it was, like, every night was crazy. So, so I remember better, that. I mean, before before you keep going, how much better did you get from the beginning of your freshman year, where it's really tough trying to figure things out? Um, coach is on you really hard because he wants you to get better quick. Um, from the beginning of that freshman year to the end, but now you're in and you're playing a lot of minutes. So I, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but how much better do you think you got throughout that season, just competing every day? Yeah, man. So so uh, my backcourt mate, Gmac, like he really gave me a lot of confidence, man. Like he 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 was like. He was feeding me. He was telling me to shoot. Like, I remember my first Big East game um, was against Notre Dame, at Notre Dame. And we won. And me and GMAC had, like, 25 apiece. And, and this, I was a freshman going in there. And I remember him coming up to me, just yelling at me, like, yeah, motherfucker. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just like, but, like, and you know, GMAC at the time, he a senior, but he a legend already. You know what I'm saying? He won a national championship. He mm-hmm. scored over 2,000 points. So, like, he seeing that, I'm like, yeah, like, this is how we rocking. Like, we was one of the best backcourts in the country. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? If you really look back and see, we was we was tough. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think really then that, that game, that Big East, that first Big East game, I was like, yeah. Like I'm, I ain't worried about nothing no more. How, how, I'm not a freshman. I'm just out here hooping. Like I'm a what basketball was, player. What was, what was coach? What was coach? What, what were some of the principles he was trying to instill in you early? From a confidence, from a what you need to be looking for offensively. Like what do I want you to do? What was he asking you to do from the beginning? Like this is what you need to do, and don't hesitate to do it. Man, coach let me rock. I, I tell you, and he and he's like that. Like he, if he if you can go. You know, obviously, decision making like early on, probably a little bit too many turnovers. So he, but I was, it was, I was rocking because I, I turn over, but I wouldn't stop playing. I'd get back and make a play. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he let guys play, man. And and like when coaches do that, that gives a player the ultimate confidence. Like when you make a mistake and you still, and he let you play through it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, like that's that's a that's the ultimate confidence for a player. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So to have your best player. Uh, G- GMAC to have your best player had that confidence in you, and then to have your head coach had that same confidence in you. I don't need anything else. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I I didn't need it anyway. You know what I'm saying? But just to put that on top, man, come on, man. So like that was like that was when I was like, yeah, I'm just out here hooping. Um, so and, and back to the other one. The other one would be uh, so that four four uh, games, four wins in in four days, um, and then the six OT. Uh, the six OT game. I mean, that's I gotta say that if I didn't say that, I I'd be wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, um, just that whole experience, like uh, in, uh, on ESPN. Talk to, talk to me about talk to me about uh, your game preparation for that game. What 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 was the what was the what was the team's morale like? How were you guys feeling headed into it? Um, and then, like from you, from 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 an individual standpoint, how did you prepare? Leading up to the six OT, yeah. I mean, we had a mob, man. We had it was so we talked about me and G Mac in the backcourt. We had myself and Johnny Flynn. So that year again, we were one of the best backcourts in the country. And then Paul Harris, Renzi Anawaku, Rick Jackson, um, Chris Christoph Ojanat, um, Andy Routens. Like we had a team. You know what I'm saying? So like we, I think it, we approached it kind of the same as is every game but it was UConn so it was a little bit more it was a little bit more going a little bit more juices was flowing a little bit more so and then you had the stage Big East tournament if you if you was a part of the Big East and you got to play in a Big East tournament at Madison Square Garden that's a whole nother level like when you play in the garden anyway but if you when when it's Big East like like those Big East tournaments in the Madison Square Garden like whew, like that whole energy was different like when you came into the garden in New York City it's like it's like the lights was on you. So it was set up. We was playing UConn at Mass Square Garden in the Big East Tournament. It was our rival. You know what I'm saying? It was like, so like it was just, I guess that 6 OT was meant to happen, man. Um, what, what did you, what, I, wa I watched them. I still remember some of it. And the, the things that I remember about that team was like, you guys really played as a team. You were very willing passes for one another. Um, it seemed as if you got everybody wanted everyone to see success, and you guys played fast. You guys played fast. Um, that's that's what that's what Syracuse is though. Um, Syracuse was built on like transition, like they like like I told you in the beginning, like that's what kind of that's what made me want to go there. Their pace and how they play, and I think the best Syracuse teams um, are great offensive teams, and then obviously great in the zone. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, that year we were we were uh, we were a good transition team. What year was that? What year was that for you? Sophomore year? That was 2008, 2009. So that was my junior year. When did you get hurt? The year before. So so that was okay. uh, uh, 2008, 2009. That was my red shirt. I was a red shirt junior. And then how did your, and then how'd your process move on from that? Because I, obviously you had incident, whatever happened. Um, but mm -hmm. then you didn't come back to school, though. Uh, weren't you weren't you granted another year like you yes yeah yep 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 so so i i had uh i had another year um uh, decided to put my name in the draft didn't get drafted um you know at the time i had i had my uh my daughter so you know it was it was a lot going on man off the court and uh made a decision to leave and um you know i i could have came back and a lot of people would be like you could have came back with an all-time lead score in syracuse syracuse history which which is cool to think about because it was definitely a it was definitely possible but um you know like like you said our we learn from all our experiences you know what I mean like like that's where my mindset was at at the time you know what I'm saying and um you know everybody's journey is different that that was how mine went you know what I'm saying and now it brought me to where I am now um, learned from all those experiences um, and now I'm able to um, share it with these kids coming up and kind of you know like you said the blueprint kind of be like hey like if you run into this like this is what you probably should do uh, or, or be a little bit more patient take your time you know what i'm saying like i like i think back then it was just like uh, i was almost like in a rush you know what i'm saying to just to go out and and, and at that time we young like what was i in a rush for you know what i'm saying but mm -hmm. um man just fortunate to like have those situations and learn from them and and now not only use them you know, forward in my life, but help other people as well. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to get to your business momentarily. I just want to talk to you quickly and briefly about, so you play seven years overseas, seven years, correct? Um, yeah. And then 
obviously you have to make a decision to come back home. Now, what do I want to do when I come back home? And you were on staff because I can tell, like, you guys are very loyal to each other and, I mean, and coaches trying to help guys find situations. As long as you've done right by both parties, because obviously there's some, mis there's some confusion at times. Um, yeah. So you're on staff, and I'm, I'm assuming where you're thinking that, okay, I want to coach college basketball. This is one of, that, this is this is my direction because you ended up at Detroit. Um, so how was the time on staff at Syracuse? I know you couldn't be on the court for real, so I know that was probably like a struggle a bit. And then um, you go to Detroit, you got to leave the family, and oh, you weren't on the court in Detroit. That's where it could have been. Yeah, happened. yeah, but that's that's what they say. But we made it happen. Trust of course. me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but um, but no, man. So uh, I was in New Zealand. Um, I remember texting Coach Beheim, and and like our relationship is, we got a great relationship. I'm mm -hmm. super close with his with his sons, uh, work out his sons, and um, super close with you know just with the whole family, man. Mm -hmm. So uh, I remember texting him, and and he's like, Coach, man, like, you know, I'm ready to come back. I think I'm ready to come back and coach. Like, you do you got some you got some for me? And he you know hit me back. He's like, We'll see what we could do. So I came back, finished up my degree. So I had to, now I finished my degree, but I went to school. Like it wasn't just online. Like I went, I had my backpack on, my, my coat on. It's, it's, it's cold in the winter in Cuse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm walking to class and, and like I was, like I was back, you know what I'm saying? So um, I did a whole year of that, then a summer. And then when I did that, um, I was able to get back on staff because you had to have your degree. Um, so just that whole experience, man, leading up to that, was was pretty cool because now I'm going back to school and I'm I'm sitting in the front, you know what I'm saying? Like I and, and we have a, a like a big class and then that Friday recitation class. I know you remember those. Uh, and, and then I'm getting ten out of ten on the quizzes. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm getting so I'm like like I'm really taking pride in in like I think I got like a three point three point five or three point four when I went back because I was like. You know what I'm saying? My mindset was different, and, and we you talked about had, that. Did you have two kids by then, though, right? Yes. So, so, so both daughters. Yeah. So, so doing all that, juggling, juggling that, and then still being able to go to class. Like I had some times where, like, it was crazy. Like I, you know, what I'm saying I had to go take a test and, and leave them at the basketball office with the uh, with the secretary there. Like it was, it, it, it was, it was crazy, man. But uh, man, definitely worth it. And then got my degree went back on staff for those for those two years at Cuse and tried to be a sponge, man. I, learned I mean, a lot. learned a lot. I got to play for a Hall of Famer. Then I got to be on coaches, a coaching staff with a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and I was in all the meetings, all the film breakdowns. So they was, he treated me like an assistant coach. You know what I'm saying? Like I got to do scout reports, do all that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, man, super, super grateful for everything coach Behan did for me, like, and still does for me, you know, today. So, uh, yeah, man, for sure. Uh, and so then you get the opportunity at Detroit. And how was that opportunity? Because I know you did it for a year, and now, all right, I'm going to go back to Cuse and start my own business. So how did you get to there? Because I know that I'm assuming in your mind you're thinking, I'm going to go coach college basketball. I'm going to keep finding opportunity. Um, I'm going to be able to recruit. I'm going to do a really good job and be a good coach. And, now, and then you hop out quick. Yeah, um, so – Again, uh, just another fortunate to have another opportunity uh, to kind of like get out, get outside of Q's because I've been at Q's. That's all I know was Q's. So that's that kind of I didn't know how anything else was operated. So I remember talking to Coach Beheim about it and Coach Davis reached out to me. Um, I remember talking to Coach Beheim about it. Uh, he was like, man, go ahead, because it's good to get out and, and see something different and see how other people operate. And, and sometimes it's it's like, it's good to see that. But then it takes you back to like, man, I'm grateful for like where I was, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it, it, and it was, it's definitely different because it's mid major. So like was that his first year there, that was when his they first took year. Over, there. The, what was, what was the happening that happened before he got that job? Oh, I think he was at Texas Southern. What and that's where happening it, no. at Detroit though. Were they like, Oh, at Detroit? Were they like, terrible. Just like Owen, like did they have a really bad season before? I, I feel like something happened before he got that job. Yeah, I think it was a whole bunch of like uh, off the court stuff going on with like within the coaching staff. You know what I'm saying people I'm going sure. behind the back, yeah. whatever it was. But yeah, um, they got up out of there, uh, and, and and it was a great experience going there, seeing how you know uh, 
they do things differently. Uh, but but again, I was in Detroit. I was away from the fam. What were like, your duties? So I was a special, a special assistant to head coach. So like um, had all the film groups like for all the when the, all the players came in and individually one on one, we did the film breakdown like from practice or for, for the game. Um, you know, I did I did workouts for the guys. I did, in the morning, I did the team workouts as far as like conditioning and and just like just drills and stuff like that. So I had a I had a big responsibility, and then I brought the whole zone. You know what I'm saying? So I, I brought the whole two three zone and, and broke all that down to all the coaches, okay. and then I, and then I broke it down to the team as well. So because they were kind of just they were learning from me. You know what I'm saying? So I had a I had a big responsibility, and, and uh, I'm grateful for Coach Davis for giving me that and like kind of letting me really do my thing. Um, it just so happened that you know it was it wasn't a good fit because like I was away from home and w not with my. It was a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, w it was a lot. It was more than it was more than basketball, and, and I wanted to be able to come home, be here with the fam, and then uh, kind of had the freedom to do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? With basketball. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that's kind of why. Uh, uh, I started the ED two three hoops and and uh, you know before everything with like COVID and stuff we was really rocking like with camps and uh, we'll have free clinics and we'll have like workouts during the week groups and then one on one stuff so uh, it was really cool man and and, and you know um, I was in Q's and like they support me a hundred percent at at whatever I've done so you know I'm fortunate to to have that as well. When did it come to mind that you wanted to do that? When did you have the idea? Well, I, mean, I you know, I was always kind of like working kids out on the, like, you know, doing that just sometimes like people would reach out to me. Hey, you work my kid out. Uh, but then I was like, man, let me I'm really going to start doing this, doing some camps. And uh, I remember really going to get my LLC and doing all that. And that's when it was really like official, like doing the camps and teaming up with other um, people out of state and doing that's camps. Right. I saw you were working with Dags. I saw you guys did it. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I did stuff with Dags, and and Dags is awesome, man. Like, because mm -hmm. you know he's been doing it for for like ten plus years, thirteen years. So he really knew how, you know, he really knew how like everything flowed and stuff like that. He really helped me out, mm -hmm. um, you know, learning how to run the camps and, and and stuff like that. Like basketball, it's it's more than basketball, right? Like you know the game, but now like it's a business. Now you got to put it together and organize everything and it got to flow. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, I was kind of getting my businessman on a little bit and, and learning that side of things. So yeah, it, it grew me, you know what I'm saying? Like to, like we talked about, to be able to do more than basketball, but still stick with basketball. Mm -hmm. So what, what are the aspirations? If we can, if we can end with this. I just want to, I just want you to put your, um, organization on more than it is already, but just explain, exactly what your goals are for um, the business and what you want to continue to bring to Syracuse in the central New York area. Yeah. So um, ED23 hoops. I mean, it's, you know, we do more than basketball. Um, I'm actually working on getting my uh, nonprofit as well. Um, you know, like I said, we do camps and, and free clinics, but like we, we also do like, um, you know, coat drives and shoe giveaways and, um, uh, we just did recently a turkey giveaway. We gave away uh, 400 dinners to, to families in Syracuse. So uh, really just trying to like build some and eventually, try, you know, obviously want to get our own building and own gym. And uh, once you, you know, that's the key when you have your own gym and own plate, you can really do a lot and start doing tournaments and, and, and things like that. But really just trying to build some positive to where um, you, you bring in like real basketball teaching and development like real live you know what i mean it's so many it's saturated now right like with people just doing gimmicks and like and, and the parents don't know better because they believe in what you're telling them right as they should because like why why would you do somebody like that <laughs> you know what i mean but so so bringing you real live basketball teaching and development but also like um uh, bringing bringing you community events to where um you know if you're involved in that you could also be involved in this to where you're helping out the community as well like this is this is what we're doing in the community. So we want to be able to give more than just basketball. You know what I'm saying? We want to give people um, opportunities. Like we keep, we keep talking about opportunities to broaden their horizons. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like this is, this is what basketball can do for you. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to be a D1 basketball player. Like you can strive for that for sure. But along the way, like try this out, you know what I'm saying? Like this and have that in your back pocket, you know what I'm saying? For when, you done playing or whatever it is like so like it's it's, it's kind of it's developing basketball but it's developing you know as a person you know what i'm saying 
Absolutely, bro. Um, well, what came to mind was at some point when things open up and get back to some type of norm, and this could be vice versa, but we definitely got to try to do something where we connect and uh, utilize our networks to uh, be fruitful and uh, help the kids, help the community. It doesn't just have to be the kids, right? Because so many people need it, not just kids. Um, right. So we definitely got to do something. Let's stay connected. Um, I wanted to ask you one more thing, but I forgot, so I'll touch base with you. Um, but I appreciate you being on, bro. Um, I truly believe that everybody I have on the show, I have them on because they have something to give. Um, they have great experience, and uh, they've done things that not everybody has done, and, and, and you did that because I, I truly believe that you are, and you might not you know, carry this with you right now, but you, you, you are a legend status. Um, in many people's eyes. So congratulations I, I appreciate on your that. success so far. And um, let's continue to build. And that's all I got. I appreciate you, bro. Much love, all right? Oh, man, much love. I appreciate you having me on. And, and we locked in, man. Like like you said, when, uh, uh, when everything kind of calms down, we definitely going to get together and, and make something happen. Well, we're connected, though, to a certain extent because, um, you know, the Syracuse has a – a pretty solid city rock connection. I'm a city rock guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know Jim Jim Hart. That's yeah, I know Jim. Yeah, that's my guy for sure. Big home. Yeah, we locked in, man. All right, that's a bet. Let's uh let's stay in contact, bro. Be safe. Um and we'll talk soon, okay? Absolutely, man. Appreciate you.